So in this lesson, we're going to look at equivalent ratios, and we're going to learn two new uh, tools that we can use to find equivalent ratios. So just as a review, recall that equivalent ratios are ratios that simplify to the same ratio. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to remember, use the idea of equivalent ratios to solve problems. So we've already looked at creating equivalent ratios and we looked at two methods to do that. We said we can simplify some ratios using GCF. And then the second method that we looked at was multiplying by a common factor. So for example, if we had a ratio such as three to five, we could go ahead and take three to five and we can multiply both the three and the five by four, which is a common factor. And we could say that three times four is 12, five times four is 20. And so we know with confidence that the ratio 12 to 20 is also going to be in the same ratio because 12 over 20, when you simplify it, is also three to five. Uh, but same token, we could go ahead and look at a ratio that, let's say it's 50 to 65, and we could simplify it because they're both divisible by five, and we get 10 over 13, and 10 and 13 can't be simplified any further because they are relatively prime is the perfect word for it. And so we know that 10 to 13 is a equivalent ratio because 50 over 65 simplifies to 10 over 13. So we have already learned this first method, a table of equivalent ratios. So remember with a table of equivalent ratios, if we take our first ratio, for example, three to five, and we wanted to go ahead and find some equivalent ratios, we could go ahead and do add three to the first value. And then for every three we add to the first one, we would have to add five, which is the corresponding value to the second one. So three, six, nine, five, 10, 15. Or I could do some multiplying three times 10, for example, five times 10. And so this is a table of equivalent ratios. So today what we're gonna learn is a second method, tape diagrams, and a third method, which is kind of similar, but uses a different tool called a double number line. So let's first go ahead and look at a tape diagram. Now, if we were actually doing a physical model for this, we might use post-its for this, or we could draw some rectangles um, I'm not sure exactly where they got tape diagram. I think it's because they just like put some tape on a table or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's read our problem. Okay, a county superintendent of highways is interested in the number of different types of vehicles that regularly travel from his county. In the month of August, a total of 192 registrations were purchased for passenger cars and pickup trucks. Okay, so that's 192 cars and trucks at the local Department of Vehicles. The DMV, which is Department of Motor Vehicles, reported that in the month of August for every five passenger cars, so it looks like a ratio is coming up, so for every five passenger cars registered, there were seven pickup trucks registered. How many of each type of vehicle were registered in the county in the month of August. So that's our question that we're trying to answer. So we always have to remember that it's not enough just to go ahead and do some math. We have to actually answer the question. Okay, so with the tape diagram, we go ahead and we use piece two as each as a ratio. So I'm going to say that this specific rectangle here is going to represent my um, cars. 
So blue is going to be cars for me. And green is going to be my trucks. You don't even have to have different colors. So I'm going to say that, okay, for cars, my ratio is five for every seven trucks. So now if I go ahead and I add another set of cars and another set of trucks, how many do I add? Well, now I've added five more. So now I have 10 and 14 because I added five cars and seven trucks. Okay, so I've gotten up to this point and I've been adding fives and I've been adding sevens to both values of the ratio or to the individual values of the ratios, I should say. And I haven't really gotten to answer the question. So let's go back and look at the question again. It says, how many of each type of vehicle were registered in the county in the month of August? Well, remember in the month of August, there were 192 registrations. So that means I kind of need a third line here and I need to look at totals. So how many total cars were, if there was five cars and seven trucks, that means there was a total of 12. Here we have 24. Here we have 36. Here we have 48. And here we have 60. So you see, it's taking a while by doing this individually. So instead of adding fives each time, we could go ahead and we can use our equivalent ratios and we could use some multiplication. So instead of going ahead now, and I've already gone ahead and added five, five times. So let's go ahead and try multiplying instead. And I'm gonna multiply now by 10. So I'm gonna do five times 10, which is 50. And then I'm gonna multiply by common factor of 10 or seven and that's gonna give me 70. And so now I'm up to 120 total vehicles. Still not quite there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna to choose to use a bigger number. So remember, I'm trying to get up to 192. So I know that if I'm at 120, I need at least 72 more cars. And I know that 72, um, when I'm looking at that five and seven, I see that five and seven added up to 12. So I know that 72 is divisible by 12 and 12 goes into 72 six times. So I'm thinking if I go ahead, instead of multiplying five and seven by 10, if I multiply it by 16, so five times 16 would give me 80 and then seven times 16, that would give me 70 and 42, which is 112. That, 192. And so that is the total of the vehicles. Okay, so let's go back. So the question said, how many of each type of vehicle were registered in the county in the month of August. So there were 80. Okay, and so remember this first one was cars. Cars and second row was trucks. Oops. 112 trucks registered. in the month of August. So remember when you're answering your question, you want to put the values. You wanna make sure that you're saying what the values mean. You wanna try and use a complete sentence and you want to repeat the question in the terms of a statement. So how many of each type of vehicle were registered in the county in the month of August? There were 80 cars and 112 trucks registered in the month of August. So a tape diagram doesn't need to be anything really fancy too much. Um, so because we're doing this digitally, I went ahead and I used this. You could use post-it notes. Um, you can draw your own boxes. 
okay, to make it. So, and you're using each post-it note to represent one part of a ratio. So if we had a ratio of three to five, then I could do our tape di my tape diagrams like that. Okay, now a double number line is kind of like a, um, a tape diagram, but we're using number lines instead and we're numbering them according differently according to our ratio. So it's kind of like, you know, just like you would skip count. So here's a different question. It says, a graphic design studio has purchased a new set of computers. They need one PC for every three Mac computers. So right there, we have a ratio. One PC for every three Macs. If they plan on buying a total of 24 computers for their study, then our question is, how many of each type should they buy? So when you're reading a question, don't forget you want to go ahead and make sure you use either a pencil, a highlighter, underline, something, so that you can go and make sure that you are grabbing the important numbers, important words, and phrases, and always make sure you understand what the question is. And the question should be a different color or symbol so that you know what question you're trying to answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and use it. So just like with a tape diagram, we start off with the original ratio. So I'm going to let this be, ma um, whoops, not max. Okay, so I'm going to let my first number line, I'm going to label it, and this is going to be PCs. And I'm going to let my second number line be max. So I'm going to put a one here for PC and I'm going to put just to use a different color. I'm going to put three there. Okay. So every time I add one PC, I add three max. So I have to remember that. So let's go ahead. And remember, since this one is talking about a total, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a third line here for totals so I can keep a running total. And I know that four times six is going to be what gets me to uh, to um, have 24. So I know that if I go ahead and use this tool, I'm gonna have to do it six times. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep going by adding one PC and three Macs every time. So if I add one PC, I have two PCs. And if I add corresponding number of Macs, now I have six and my total is eight. So I'm gonna add another PC and I'm gonna add three more Macs for that one PC. And my total now is going to be three plus nine, which is 12 total computers. Okay, so now I'm going to go keep going. So. Now you might have noticed I ran out of room and that's okay because a number line just like a um, using the tape diagrams, so you can expand it so I'm going to go ahead and expand it. I'm going to put another tick mark over here. And I'm going to go ahead and put one more and hope, see if I need more after that. So I have six plus 18 and 24. And remember I was looking for a total of 24. So this is the location that answers my question, but my answer isn't 24, it's how many of each type should I buy? So the answer to my question is they should buy six 
six PCs, and eight team max. So that is using a double number line. And so that's one of three different types of tools that we have. Okay, table of ratios, tape diagram, double number line that we can go ahead and use to find equivalent ratios.